Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now here, inmates in Nottingham Prison may have taken their own lives because they could no longer face conditions there. According to the Chief Prisons Inspector's report, Peter Clark said that for too long, prisoners there had been held in a dangerous and disrespectful environment. His report found there had been eight self-inflicted deaths at the jail since the last inspection just two years ago, four of them in as many weeks. We'll be speaking to the prison's minister in a moment, but first, our senior home affairs correspondent, Simon Israel, has been hearing from the mother of one of the inmates who died. Fundamentally unsafe was the inspector's verdict. So unsafe, Nottingham Prison became the first jail to be put under special measures four months ago. Today's Chief Inspector report illustrates why it had become so dangerous for both inmates and staff. Drugs rife, self-harm pandemic, violence endemic, emergency call bells unanswered, five deaths within a few weeks. This in a prison, an institution under state control, under ministerial responsibility. But tell that to a mother who lost her son inside last year. They just said, we're very sorry. Um, obviously my reactions, I knew what had happened then. Um, and they just basically said, um, we're so sorry, he was found with ligature marks round his neck. 23-year-old Mark Maltby was serving a four-month sentence. He was back in prison for missing probation appointments. He survived three weeks before being found dead in his cell last October. To me, they're there, they, well, they say they're there to keep, for their own good, keep them out of trouble, um, and then they don't come out of there. It, they obviously, and they're safeguarding, where's that? Um, to me, it's just appalling, it's just wrong, terrible. He was one of five to have taken their own lives in this jail within two months. Today, the Chief Inspector of Prisons questioned whether the conditions inside drove some of them to take their own lives. Obviously, I hope very much that uh, these tragedies uh, weren't brought about by the poor conditions and the danger that we saw at Nottingham, but we have to ask that question. And we also have to ask the question as to whether any of those deaths were avoidable. The prison ombudsman has investigated all the deaths. She found in some cases lessons had not been learnt and in others there were inexcusable delays. Could any of these deaths have been prevented? Yes, almost certainly some of them could have been prevented. One of the cases where the cell bell wasn't answered for about 40 minutes, um, it appears that um, it was the staff lunch break and there was nobody on duty who had responsibility for answering the bells. And that's inexcusable, isn't it? It is. It's completely unacceptable. I mean, the state is responsible for everyone inside Nottingham Prison and every other prison. Yes, and um, the Inspectorate of Prisons has an expectation that um, cell bells will be answered within five minutes, but a 40-minute delay, or in another case, uh, there was a, a delay of about um, 43, 44 minutes, is simply not acceptable. There is no excuse for it. The jail is still under a regime of special measures. More than half its staff, the inspectors noted, had less than one year's experience. The prison service is intending to publish another action plan. Is Nottingham now safe? I can't say whether Nottingham is now safe. We as an inspectorate make our report. It's a snapshot in time. Uh, it's now a matter for the prison service to respond to our report and to make sure that next time we inspect, we don't for the fourth time have to report on an unsafe jail. But it's too late for Mark Maltby's family and the families of the other four. It's an absolute disgrace that within a prison like Nottingham, two out of 13 safety recommendations only were implemented. What more does it take for this government to act? And we need to have far greater accountability. And if that's a question of utilising corporate manslaughter legislation, then maybe that's the road we need to go down. Nottingham Prison is not alone in wrestling with deteriorating conditions. But to raise the possibility of being a factor in deaths marks another low in a system which is struggling to cope even with extra staff. Sam in Israel reporting.
Well, earlier I spoke to the prison's minister, Rory Stewart. Minister, the document from Peter Clark, the prison's inspector, starts with this question. Did prisoners take their lives because they could no longer face a violent, drug-ridden jail? What would your answer be to that? So, uh, Peter Clark's report's very uh, hard on that, and he is drawing a strong connection between the conditions in the jail and people killing themselves. It's horrifying, the number of people who killed themselves. But Four in one month in Nottingham. If you look at these six different cases of people who've killed themselves in Nottingham, one of them is a case of a young man who, this was his very first time in the prison system, and for him, clearly, I think, the trauma of being in prison will have been a strong contributory factor. For well, others, there'll be strong things in their past. We, we've been to see the mother of Mark Maltby. She says that um, his life might have been saved. Um, they have this prison bell. Mm -hmm. it's, it's controversial as to whether he rang it or he didn't. Mm -hmm. But we know that in one case, the bell was rung and all the prison staff were on a meal break and nobody responded. As you say, a lot of this is about basic procedures. There's not an abstract idea on how you run a good prison. It's to do with good, experienced staff doing their jobs well, making sure those bells are answered, making sure that you identify a vulnerable prisoner often on the first day that they come in and that you put the right support around them. We have two reports, one from the prison's ombudsman and one from Peter Clark, and both of them public officials, no axe to grind, mm -hmm. and both of them fundamentally regard the prison system, per se, not just Nottingham, as unfit for purpose. Yeah. So, and, and the buck stops with you. Absolutely. The buck absolutely stops with me. So I will be judged on whether I can demonstrate that I can turn around a prison like Nottingham. So what I'd like is to come back and see you in 12 months' time and talk about what we've done. But a lot of it is going to be about staff, a lot of it's about training, a lot of it's about basic standards. One thing that I observed in relation to Nottingham, for example, is that at one point we had nearly 75 people on this ACT suicide watch procedure. It's too many. You can't have a situation where nearly 10% of your prisoners are being managed in that way. You suffered 25% cuts in the prison funding. And you're about, before uh, 2020, you are going to get 40% cuts. I mean, how can you conceivably improve the prison system if you're suffering cut after cut after cut? Is it going to stop? Is the cutting going to stop? Yes. In relation to prison officers, for example, uh, in fact, we're going to be employing more prison officers. Well. And overall funding, because, I mean, it's no good getting cheap prison officers. They've got to be well paid yep. and experienced. So nearly £100 million extra is going into employing now 2,500 extra prison officers. And Your that... cuts are being reversed. These cuts are being reversed. These so the, cuts? The prison officer cuts. So the prison officer numbers came very dramatically down. We've turned that around and we've made a decision that we cut too far and that we're going to bring 2,500 extra officers back on board. But that still won't address the cuts that are threatened to the entire prison system. You may get 100 million here and there, but it, these percentages are shocking. Yeah, the cuts have been very dramatic. I do believe with 2,500 extra prison officers, we will have the numbers we need. The government has recognised more money's got to go in. But the challenge but for me... But isn't it just Band-Aid? Well, the, the challenge for me is proving to you that we can turn this around. And where we want to be, obviously, is to have the best prison service in the world. The, the problem on prisons, and this is why uh, coming on this programme is so important, is that so often, as, you, as your photograph suggests, they're behind fences. The public are not in the prisons. It's not like a school where every pupil, every parent is there advocating for it. We really, to turn this around, it is about the government, it's about money, it's about prison officers, but it's also about re-engaging the whole of society, making people feel this is a real priority, that they care about prisons, engaging employers, sorting out accommodation, sorting out the mental health, and sorting out the trauma in these people's childhoods also that drive them into it, and everything from that through the policing to the prisons. When you became prison minister, you said, I want to deliver clean and decent prisons. And it's clear that that's not where it is at the moment. Uh, but you do say that hopefully by 12 months' time, Nottingham will be a clean and decent prison. Would you be daring enough to say you'd take me in on a visit in 12 months' time uh, and let me see for myself John, and for our programme? Uh, John, yes. Come with me to Nottingham in 12 months' time and we will go around that prison together 
and I will undertake to demonstrate that we can turn these presidents around. Minister, thank you very much indeed for talking to thank us. Thank you.